Okay, I want to dedicate uh, f- maybe at least a uh, couple of podcasts to the monsoon uh, during the Holocene, since uh, the monsoon regions got affected by a lot uh, of... S- uh, sorry, the monsoon affected a lot of civilizations and agriculture through <coughs> the Holocene, and uh, the Middle East, which we focus a lot on, and Africa, which we have focused a lot on for evolutionary timescales, uh, are kind of part of the monsoon regimes as well. Um, so let's take a brief look at this uh, as an example of where uh, a wetting, pe- a wet period uh, and abrupt changes uh, ended up in civilizational impacts but also uh, there is evidence of hydrologic and soil uh, impacts which obviously translate to agricultural impacts and lack of I mean drop in societal resilience and so on so this paper from science is on the genesis and collapse of the third millennium North Mesopotamian civilization, uh, very specific region, very specific time period, but it's kind of uh, important that the paper puts together a story that includes climate and soil and hydrology and the civilization. Uh, Archaeological and soil stratigraphic data define the origin, growth and collapse of Subir, the third millennium rain-fed agriculture civilization of northern Mesopotamia on the Habur plains of Syria. So Syria is now still going through serious uh, conflicts and Presumably, the climate was a cause, if not the major cause, for the origin of this conflict as well. At 2200 BC, a marked uh, increase in aridity and wind circulation subsequent to a volcanic eruption induced a considerable degradation of land use conditions. After four centuries of urban life, this abrupt climate change evidently caused abandonment of Telelan regional desertation and collapse of the Akkadian Empire based on southern based in southern Mesopotamia. Synchronous collapse in adjacent regions suggests that the impact of the abrupt climate change was extensive. So again um, collapse and is used here but nonetheless uh, will go with it, but uh, it's a good example of abrupt climate change induced by a volcanic eruption which we already saw as uh, being capable of, capable of producing uh, colder summers, uh, crop losses, droughts uh, and uh, so on. So this is an example where a stratigraphic evidence uh, suggests when combined with archaeological evidence that there were serious consequences and fairly widespread over this region. So here we are uh, with the uh, l- um, longitude latitude range. Uh, Subir sits up here, Akkad, the Akkadian, Sumer, etc. were uh, down here and you can see that map in the context of modern uh, boundaries of Turkey, Syria here, Tel Elan, Iran, Iraq, Jordan and Israel is somewhere down uh, there and Kuwait uh, etc. So Syro Mesopotamia 2600 to 2000 BC major urban centers of southern uh, Mesopotamia Sumer and Akkad and Habur plains of Subir which is up here uh, and adjacent uh, ancient toponyms Arrows indicate tribal pastoralists Amorite uh, so Sumerian Mardu seasonal north-south uh, transhumans uh, inferred from Habur Hiatus 1 and subsequent movement down the Euphrates and Tigris floodplains. So these are kind of the inferred movements. Um, the repeller of the Amorites wall of uh, fortresses was constructed around 2054 to 2030 BC from Badigura Saga. I don't know how you, but it's Juhura Saga. I have no idea how to pronounce this. To Simudar uh, to control 
amorite infiltration so when there is perturbation and drying and uh, impacts on agriculture in one region you expect uh, migrations and conflicts modern political units of southwest uh, uh, asia and location of tel Lailan in syria here so that's kind of the focus of this subir uh, civilization that uh, we are talking about. So I, w I will go through this table just because it provides details which are very specific to climate and directly relate to uh, agriculture even though we don't say explicitly uh, what crops and, and how agriculture was uh, affected. So we are looking at Habuigera 2, uh, pseudo sedimentary feces, feces uh, calcareous, abundant and common and these are the strata uh, depths which convert to times uh, over here in terms of correlations so let's just go through those Nuzi Ware Mitanni period around 1500 BC so we are going down uh, to older times because depth is getting older here early second millennium BC or 1900 BC uh, we will see something Leyland collapse phase 3 Leyland collapse phase 2 Leyland collapse phase 1 so there were these uh, um, hiatuses as we call them uh, centered around 2200 BC and then Leyland uh, 2b was at 2300 BC could be Ilb okay uh, what are the characteristics of starting, let's say, from back in time? Massive calcareous loam, which is a soil type, well-developed pedogenic carbonates, moderate biological activity, uh, common pseudoscience, and common sedimentary crusts. Um, environment included moderately stable soil, moderate winds, and heavy rain spells, which were favorable for gathering water and doing agriculture considering the properties of the soils. Well so, so in uh, around 2200 when the collapse started uh, you can see well sorted well rounded wind blown pseudo sands volcanic glass uh, calcitic loam and abundant sedimentary crusts. So it went through tephra fall, saltation, aeolian transport, so episodic uh, aeolian dust storms, heavy rain spells mixed with these uh, aeolian transports and degraded vegetation during the Lelian collapse, Leyland collapse 1. Uh, during Leyland collapse uh, phase 2, uh, we had fine pseudo sands, which corresponds to uh, amount of rain in some sense. Uh, volcanic glass, gypsum, calcitic loam, and abundant sedimentary crusts. Strong wind, saltation, aeolian uh, transport. Sorry, here I'm second one. Um, yeah, suspension, aeolian uh, transport, horizontal winds, heavy rain spells, and degraded vegetation continuing. And in the third phase, well sorted, well rounded calcareous pseudo sands and abundant crusts. Uh, strong winds, saltation, aeolian truss, heavy uh, transports, heavy rain spells, degraded vegetation. Okay, so now you come into uh, early second millennium BC. Um, you have calcareous loam, weak prismatic structure, low biograph biological activity, rare pseudogenic carbonates, abundant crusts, abundant windblown pseudo sands, and the environment was characterized by weak soil stability, heavy rains, surface runoff, reduced soil moisture, and moderate winds. So heavy rain spells can in fact uh, make it harder for a uh, penetration and recharge of groundwater especially when weak stability, soil stability is weak and surface runoff is strong so erosion would be high so actually soil moisture would not be high either so that's the, the interesting interactions between rain uh, and degraded soils and vegetation beforehand uh, coming uh, into the uh, end of the 1900s, second millennium BC, calcareous loam, fine prismatic structure, abundant pyrogenic carbonate, high biological activity, calcareous loam with uh, gravel lenses and calcitic nodules. Obviously I'm not saying in detail 
what this means in terms of the interaction of precipitation, vegetation, soil and potentially human activities as well. Um, so here we had uh, stable soil, vegetated, reduced wind, seasonal rainfall similar to present and uh, the uh, one, one of the periods said unstable soil, soil, surface runoff and degraded vegetation. So this shows you how uh, climate actually interacted with agricultural communities and as we had said before uh, when hunter-gatherers were moving around in small groups foraging and hunting and gathering uh, they were dealing with these type of climate perturbations to soil and vegetation by mostly moving to newer pastures um, finding food whereas settled agricultural communities in some sense grew in terms of fertility and size urbanization etc based on the favorable periods for agriculture but once they were settled it was not so easy for them to move like hunter-gatherers when things got bad and you can see that uh, attempts to move were also being uh, affected by uh, militarization and so on along the way. So this interaction between social structures, social hierarchies, militarization, agriculture and climate are, are always going to be uh, complicated and we don't want to uh, go back to environmental determinism but combining multiple evidences of hydrology and soils and agriculture and societal resilience begins to tell you how climate impacts cas cascaded through some civilizations so again climate may not be the proximal cause but persistent climate perturbations and degradation of vegetation and soil would have affected uh, agricultural civilizations as an ultimate cause okay Let's leave it there.